Hi, it's me, it's Kat, I'm back again. Um, I did want to also talk a little bit about using different ways of raising your vibration that I didn't talk about in my previous video, so I apologize that I didn't get it at all into one single video, but I think it actually takes several different steps to be able to do all of that. Um, but I think one of the best ways to really, really start is to start with little things like I talked about with the cinnamon and the clove and the lemon water. If you drink the lemon water on an empty stomach in the morning, it will actually help to flush toxins out of your body and you'll also feel that little bit of lift. Um, I mean, if you're someone like me that definitely needs her coffee, then you're still gonna need your coffee, but it does helps to uh, eliminate any toxins out of your body. So as I said, if you are someone that likes to drink and you've maybe had a little bit too much, then lemon water actually really does help. I found that out when I was in college. <laughs> that was like three years ago. Um, okay, anyway. And, and about raising your vibration, it also is about changing certain habits. I'm probably not gonna give up my coffee or my chocolate any day soon, but I did stop drinking. And that was really, really hard for me at first, but when I realized the um, downward spiral that I was going into with my drinking habit, that it it needed to stop and it was bad. It, it, I'm not gonna lie, it was scary for me and I think for people around me and I stopped. Um, I didn't go through any kind of 12-step um, program or go into AA. I sat down and I had um, some time to really try and figure out what I was gonna do. I had been really focused on, and I, and I think this is a beautiful way to actually learn how to raise your vibration to a certain extent because what spurred one of my little off the wagon moments was um, I had been working at a school and I was teaching, I started as a sub and then, since it's gonna sound like the, the man who created Hamilton, um, <laughs> I started as a substitute teacher and then the next thing I knew I was uh, teaching theater arts and literature. Who knew I had that in me? But I did. And I became all consumed with, you know, being the best teacher that I could be and um, doing all sorts of cool things for the students. And the next thing I knew, I found out the this, this school lost funding and it broke my heart. And I really did not react very well. Um, because I love teaching and right now that's such a difficult thing to do because I'm removed physically from being able to, you know, I can't give kids, you're not supposed to give kids hugs anyway, but I'm one of those people where I like to, it doesn't matter if they're little or teenagers, um, I don't know why they flock to me, but sometimes they do. <laughs> I used to have the best little uh, piano students who would sit very diligently and play their music for a certain amount of time, and then they'd turn around and be like, can I sit on your lap, cat? I wanna sit on your lap. <laughs> so, <laughs> I miss those days. Um, it, it's, I find that it's hard to teach over a phone, because I can't quite, I don't know, it's so removed in some strange, bizarre way. And I think some things just can't be taught on Zoom. Maybe they can be, but it's not the same. Um, especially for theater and movement. And well, I guess you could do a big Zoom, but I mean, you know, it, it's just, it is a very different way, and especially with teaching voice lessons and piano lessons, it needs to be a little bit more, you know, 
Uh, you don't necessarily, your pinky is like not here and you need to move it, you know, kind of thing that you might not necessarily see when a child is playing the piano and it's not in front of you. Um, but finding within your soul and your spirit what makes you happy. Sometimes you need to get yourself into um, a bit of a meditation um, and focusing on certain words can really be very transformative. There um, is online, I'll try to remember to, to link it there. It, what I studied was actually called transformational meditation that I got a certification in. And most people say, no, 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 you must need transcendental. And I say, no, not, no. <laughs> I mean transformational because it really is transformational. Um, if you focus on certain words or sayings or have mantras, um, it can totally, it, it's kind of similar to Transcendental Meditation, but it's a, it is different because what you're doing is you're taking what you are sensing and feeling and moving it into a different perspective so to speak so if you're you're feeling down and you're depressed and you're sad for whatever reasons you have and you want to transform yourself into say let's say instead of being sad you want to be happy instead of um, being depressed you want to be happy maybe you want some love in your life maybe you can just focus on certain words um, whatever it is that's going on in your life to try and change things around so you kind of get inside of that and as you sit and you meditate and you're thinking or you can even say it out loud if you'd like um, you could even get, get your phone and just go into your memos and start speaking into it and you can sit there for 15 minutes five minutes, two minutes, however much time you have, and just listen to that. Some people will call that sort of the idea of um, affirmations being repeated. It, and all of this does actually work because years ago, back when I was in college and I was paying attention, I was studying psychology and I was studying theater and drama. And um, it, it, the two actually tied together really, really well because I found some really, really interesting um, phenomenon with all of this because with neuro-linguistic programming now, did I say that right? <laughs> neuro-linguistic programming. Say that three times past. Okay. What you're doing is you're reprogramming your mind. So many of us have been brought up with maybe um, difficult situations and you have patterns that you have built throughout your, your years. So uh, all those early years from like newborn to about age seven, you're living in this theta state and you're so programmable at that point and all through those years. So whatever you learned in those the first seven years of your life, you know, you would think they would be set in stone and that's how you're gonna be. Your personality is pretty uh, set by the age of seven, but there are certain things that just will always be. It's sort of like, um, I remember when I was a little girl and one of my friends was upset because my stomach hurt and he would hold my hand, you know, and I would mean the world to me because he was so thoughtful and sweet and that person is still very thoughtful and sweet. So those kinds of things just don't change in a personality. They just, they stay there right so the the act of actually reprogramming means going back and you're gonna change how these synapses are firing around in your brain because thoughts that fire together they wire together something like that i can't remember who said that but i'll try to find that and i'll try to put 
that down in the box here. Um, so with that being said, look right down on a piece of paper, put a line down the middle of it. On one side, write your negative thoughts. On the other side, write the counter positive thought. So what you're gonna do is when you're meditating, just flip around those negative thoughts so you can't even see them and you are gonna start, you know, just saying one of those phrases over and over and over again and let that start to sink in. And if you do that for 21 days, um, 31 days, two months, some things are more difficult than others, but it means just getting inside of that. And if you're finding that you have a lot of blocks, you may want to just incorporate into what you're saying. I am now removing all of my mental and emotional blocks around love. I, you know, and say that over and over and over again and say your other mantras over and over and over again. And it will make a shift in your reality and how people treat you and how you treat yourself. But it does have to start with how you treat yourself. And if you treat yourself in a kind and loving manner, then you will treat the world in a kind and loving manner. If you respect yourself and you know you're doing the right thing, like you're putting the trash in the trash can and you're making, and you know you're careful and you put your plastic bags where it says plastic bags only you know that is part of the this whole process of learning how to elevate your spirit so to speak so it's not about talking about all of the wonderful things that you've done in your life that's not what it's about it's about going within it's this is all about knowing that when you're alone in your house and no one's looking, how are you acting? Are you still being that good person? Of course, no one's gonna do that. And if someone did that, that's highly illegal and you should prosecute them for do that, that, doing that anyway. But <laughs> what I'm meaning to say is when you're alone, and you're with yourself, what are you doing? Do you feel good about those things? Are you praying? Are you meditating? Are you being creative? Are you playing the piano? Are you writing a song? Are you snuggling with your doggy or playing with your kitty cat? Um, you know, are you scooping out the kitty litter and singing a silly little song about poop? I mean, it's all about going within and just reminding yourself of where you came from and where you're going to and where you are in your current process of life. It's mindful. It's about living mindfully. And that's what I want for people to do is to live mindfully, okay? Thank you for listening.